Minister Zoran Milanovic has called once again for dialogue with opponents of bilingual signs on government buildings in minority populated areas. The Prime Minister said that he couldn't make any promises because the signs were required by law. Milanovic pledged to attend commemorations in Vukovar, marking the fall of the town to Serb led forces in 1991 on November 18th. A homeland war monument was unveiled today in the Jelas forest southeast of Vukovar in memory of nine Croatian soldiers and civilians killed by Serb-led forces in 1991. The remains of four Croatian soldiers and seven civilians were laid to rest today in nearby Sotin. The bodies were exhumed earlier this year from a mass grave in the area. President Ivo Josipovic is in Bulgaria on an official visit. Josipovic and his host, Bulgarian President Rozen Plevneliev, committed today to fostering better business ties between their two countries. Both leaders said that the region would greatly benefit from further EU enlargement in terms of long-term stability and peace. Croatia and Bulgaria have pledged to offer assistance to their non-member state neighbors in their efforts to join the bloc. NATO's Parliamentary Assembly has finished its annual meeting in Dubrovnik. Participants condemned the actions of the Assad regime in Syria, called on the West not to lift sanctions against Iran until there is proof that the country is not pursuing a nuclear weapons development program, and recommended that the alliance continue its open-door policy toward the Western Balkans. The non-binding conclusions of the gathering will be forwarded to NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen and the North Atlantic Council. The Zagreb Blind and Vision Impaired Theater Troupe New Life and the Vidra Theater are hosting this week the 8th edition of the Blind in Theater Festival. The director of the festival, Vojn Peric, points out that Croatia is still the only country in the world to host such an event. It also has the oldest blind theater in the world. This year's edition includes foreign guests from Slovenia, Montenegro, the United States and Britain. It's an amazing opportunity for visually impaired professional theatre practitioners to come together from across the world and to share their practice, to share their culture and to share their experience of being blind or partially sighted. And it's the only experience of this kind that ever happens every two years. So Croatia should be very proud of itself. In sports news, Medvedchak's eight-game winning streak ground to a halt at home on Sunday when they lost to Moscow Spartak in a penalty shootout 3-2. The Bears managed to lead the Russians twice during regular play, but Spartak evened the score, sending the game into overtime. No goals were scored, forcing a penalty shootout. Medvedchak are now fourth in the Western Conference, with 29 points earned in 17 games. In third round ABA Basketball League action, Sibona Zagreb defeated Hungarian side Zolnoki at home last night, 87-63. Marin Drožić led Sibona with 17 points. The team faces Montenegro's Budućnost next. Kenyan Maio Stanley Kiprop and Serbian Ana Subotic were the winners of the 22nd Zagreb Marathon held Sunday in the capital. Lisa Stublic also broke the competition's women's record in the half marathon, finishing in 1 hour, 11 minutes and 43 seconds. Tuesday's forecast calls for light rain overnight and morning fog. The day will be partly sunny and dry in the interior, on the coast variable clouds with occasional rain. Southwesterly winds in the interior, a southwesterly turning to a southeasterly on the coast. Morning lows will range from 7 to 12 degrees in continental Croatia and from 13 to 18 degrees along the Adriatic. Highs for the day are expected to range between 17 and 22 degrees.